Did you know that pretty much all of the other VPN review channels on YouTube that rank in the results are voiced by the same person? Look no farther than Consumer Research Studios with this voice. Welcome back, and today I'm gonna to talk about NordVPN. Geek Man. Welcome back. So today I wanna to talk about some of the best v VPN discovery. Welcome back, and today I wanted to bring you guys a Cyber Geeks. Welcome back. So today I wanted to quickly show you guys how you VPN Ninja. Welcome back, and today I wanted to address this question, which is our free VPN. Panda Tech. Welcome back. Today I want to talk about some of the best free VPN. Masters of VPN. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you guys. Look at their analytics. We could see a total of 523 likes and zero comments with 1.8 thousand views. Well, at least in my opinion, that seems very legitimate. So if you're tired of seeing all of these reviews that just suck, stay tuned to Tom Spark Reviews, the only channel that does objective data-driven reviews sourced on VPN tier list with my objective rating table, data cataloging every single VPN. And no, I'm not on any other channel doing any other voiceovers. All right, guys, so welcome to a NordVPN review. As you probably saw from that intro, there are a lot of NordVPN um, kind of spammers as well as Surfshark and some other VPNs here on YouTube doing all these reviews, which I don't find legitimate. If the same voice is doing the same reviews, doing the same kind of reviews, having these kind of analytics that don't really make sense, well, you really do need to watch a, a v review you can trust when it comes to NordVPN specifically. So that's what we're going to be doing here today. We're not just going to give you the pros. We're also going to give you the cons in each individual category. Now, NordVPN is definitely probably the biggest VPN provider valued at around like, I don't know, I think it's valued almost at like a billion dollars or something like that. It's definitely a huge VPN provider, but we're going to be trying to make a relatively small review that you can watch pretty quickly, but still get a lot of information. So guys, let's go ahead and rate NordVPN with my VPNTierlist.com rating system using objective data-driven reviews. If you want, you could check out VPNTierlist.com to see the data table and exactly where Nord scores exactly where. So make sure to do that. Um, maybe after you watch this video, if you still need more help deciding, I'll be putting a link for Nord in the description down below that should get you the pricing seen in this video. It will get you the best price on Nord um, that you can lock in. If you don't want to use my link, you don't have to, and you don't have to support the channel. But no, this video is not sponsored by Nord. I'm just an affiliate for them, like I am pretty much every other VPN provider. So if we take a look at pricing here, we could take a look and see what you're really getting for what you're paying. If you do decide to get the core package, it's going to run to be $180 for the first two years. And this doesn't include some of the extras like the data breach scanner, cloud storage, file encryption, and password manager, which you do get for $134 for the first two years. Now, I do believe Nord does increase the price after this subscription term, which is going to be around $100 year after year for that, which definitely is a little bit pricey. None of the other reviews on YouTube are really mentioning that, so it's something I should mention. Uh, what some people do is they game the system, they subscribe for Nord for two years, cancel their thing, and make a new account. And that's certainly an option you can do. Just be aware that sometimes these subscriptions will charge you a month before that term ends, so it's also something you kind of need to be on the lookout for. Really, the only affordable thing you can really get with nord is if you go long term the other plans just like surfshark some other vpns out there month to month it's pretty much too expensive for you to get a good value unless you just want to try out the service one month and then pick a subscription um so that's something to think about you really do want to go long term if you want to get the best deal month to month is really just for trying out and there are some other vpns out there that are cheaper month to month so if that's if you're really on a budget you might want to think about that too nord unfortunately doesn't have um unlimited simultaneous connections which means you can only you really use around six simultaneous connections um, if you want to use Nord on multiple different devices. So that's also something that could be improved with Nord. Uh, Nord also has a lot of marketing, a lot of sales going on all the time. And some of these countdown clock timers sometimes are like cookie based, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, so that could definitely be improved. Surfshark uses more real cookie timers or they, they use more real timers where like the sales actually going to end. 
But as long as you use my link in the description, don't worry. You're going to be able to pretty much get a good price and Nord all year long. Uh, I guess a pro of that is that they're always doing these sales. So at least there is that to think about. So overall, those are my complaints and the pros and cons with this pricing system. Um, overall, you get good deals long term with some decent bundles. Um, however, short term pricing is a little bit expensive. There could be more simultaneous connections. The marketing could be cleaned up a little bit to be a little bit more simple and more honest, in my opinion, on the front page. And that is kind of my final thoughts there. But now let's go into the application section where we could take a look at Nord's application and see what it has to offer. They have recently updated the interface and I actually quite like it. It's very minimalist and easy to use, but at the same time, very comprehensive. You could pick your servers here. You could select a server by searching for it. You could turn on MeshNet. If you didn't know what MeshNet is, I made a video here on the channel discussing it. It's basically like a way to remote into your network to gain access to whatever devices are on your network. Whether that be a media server, you can even kind of do it with your friends to um, sync up um, LAN to play on the same kind of network for a LAN game. So that's interesting. Um, you could just turn it on right here. If we look at the settings, we can see all the basic things we need, like WireGuard, split tunneling, um, those kind of things. The thing I like about Nord over Surfshark specifically is they do provide a SOX5 proxy, which you can find on their website with tutorials on that. Um, so they do provide that if you're interested. Overall though, they have most of the things you're gonna need from that application. If we specifically are looking for some things, well, they could add a uh, Linux GUI. Right now they have a CLI, which is a command line, but not an actual GUI. Surfshark does have that. They could add port forwarding, which would nice. Uh, email alias feature, Surfshark has that, nor does not. V2 race support, which would be good. It's a kind of an anonymous proxy you could use in central countries. They could add some more VPN router support um, on their website, as well as some secure encrypted storage option. Um, well, they do have that, Surfshark does not. And that's kind of why I did want to mention to you guys, Surfshark and Nord are both owned by the same company, Testanet. Um, they're kind of like sister companies. Um, they kind of merged, they didn't acquire one another or anything like that, but both of these products are pretty much owned by the same company and have a lot of similarities. Nobody on YouTube is really going to tell you that either because they kind of want you to try to decide between the two and make it seem like you're making more of a choice than you are. Both of these products, whether Surfshark or Nord, are going to be extremely similar. Really, there's only a point or two difference between the two products. But in this video, I did want to kind of clarify those exact differences. Surfshark is a little bit better with the email alias. Um, it has a Linux GUI, whereas Nord has a little bit more options with some of the bundles, whether that be password management, encrypted storage, and the Sox5 proxy. Um, so that is at least something that's cool. Additionally, NordVPN CLI app on Linux is actually open source, which is kind of cool. So those are my final thoughts on the application though. Um, really well done application in terms of how easy it is to use. Um, one thing I don't like about it though is for some reason the obfuscated servers don't work. I don't know why this has been an issue for me. And if you're having issues with Nord, that probably is why. Just stay away from it. If you want, you could use OpenVPN instead of this, which might have a similar result or just stick to the default settings and use it that way. And you shouldn't have any issues. But up next, we're going to be doing a speed test. And just like Surfshark, Nord has always performed very well in my speed tests. Always one of the fastest VPN providers that you can really use. All right, guys, we're going to be doing a speed test now on this channel. We always do live best speed tests, as you guys know. Um, we never fake our speed tests like some other channels out there. So let's go ahead and see. Um, usually without VPN, we can get around six to 800 in that range. Um, I'm supposed to get around a gigabit per second. But there are some uh, slowness in uh, variation in my mesh network that kind of trickles down. Um, but generally, we do get pretty good speeds. Um, and these are exactly the speeds we want to see. It's really getting hardly any speed lost. I mean, anything between 7 to 800 really is as fast as we can get, usually even without VPN. So for those people like Sun Knudsen that are telling you VPNs are too slow and you should use Tor, uh, well, uh, my internet is faster than his. Uh, you know, he has 500 megabits per second. I have a gig, but I'm still getting faster speeds than him, even with VPN on. And even with VPN off, I would probably only really get around 800. So yeah, VPNs are fast nowadays. NordVPN is fast. Probably the biggest VPN in terms of the server network. And you really are never going to have any complaints with speeds when it comes to Nord. Um, I would say probably out of all the VPNs, the fastest ones are Nord, Surf, and TorGuard, just because they really optimize their server network. 
but definitely a good job from Nord. Now, unfortunately, right after that amazing speed test, we have to look at some of the bad stuff. While Nord is definitely one of those VPNs that is ran like a traditional kind of online business. And unfortunately, even though they're in the privacy space, their website is still loaded with ad trackers and third party cookies. Now, is this going to be detrimental to your privacy? Well, once you buy the service and ever go to the website, probably not too much. They're definitely going to have information on you as a customer and they use Google Analytics. Um, so it might not compromise your privacy overall that much. It's just not the best look for NordVPN to have these specific things on the website. And this is one of the reasons you know this is a legit review. All those other show reviews I showed you on YouTube, all those other fake reviews done by the same voice actor that does 30 videos, they're not going to mention criticisms like this. Now, does this mean you shouldn't use Nord? Well, for most users, it won't really impact their performance or their privacy really of the core VPN product, but it's definitely something they could improve and remove all this stuff on the website. I, they keep this stuff on the website to optimize sales and make their business more money, um, but you can still run a profitable privacy business without some of this stuff. Is this ever going to be removed? Well, probably not because it is a huge company. The other companies out there that don't have any of the stuff on the website are admittedly much smaller. Maybe there could be an argument that if you didn't have some of this useful analytics that are probably better than some of the open source ones, um, maybe they wouldn't be as big of a company and it wouldn't have as big of a privacy reach. So it's really kind of up to you on how you view this, but they're not going to get points here for this section. Additionally, on Android, they also have some trackers too. Um, you can look it up on Exodus trackers probably a couple more than they should and we've looked at that in past reviews but i already know they're not going to have a perfect performance um that said if we again go into the next category streaming it's a complete opposite story um with nordvpn you're pretty much going to be able to unblock anything you want um they really do have a good network set up um, better than pretty much any other vpn to unblock certain restrictions if you want to watch you know the usa content you can watch the same if you want to watch japan content you can watch Irubito Stranger. By the way, if you want to look at this website, I don't run it, but it's called Unogs, and you can pretty much see any content anywhere you could watch. And Nord is definitely one of the best ones to do this. If you want to watch Costco at Christmas, um, you could switch to UK server, and it's as simple as just switching servers in the client application. So we have amazing speeds, uh, like we see here, <laughs> somewhat kind of bad website trackers, but again, contrasted but really good performance with streaming compatibility next up we can talk about the customer support um, and with nord we do see pretty good customer support very responsive the support's always open uh, generally live chat is always open as well so you really shouldn't have any issues there um, with nord vpn so guys now that we're at the end of the review how does nord do specifically as an overall aggregate well let's go ahead and take a look at the data because this was a, an objective review well, as you can see here on the tier list, um, as we discussed in the pricing section, Nord has room for improvement. They're not really that affordable short term. They've gotten a little bit more affordable yearly um, by yearly, and they're a little bit more transparent with um, the price increase, but they still do have one after your first term subscription. In terms of the application, they do pretty well. I like how they have open source Linux apps application, and they do have stuff like DNS customization, a couple things, a couple add-ons that could be interested if you're interested in the bundled offerings, the wire guard, kill switches, split tunneling, all the kind of essentials that you would need, as well as ad blocking and some kind of interesting threat protection that works neatly with the default subscription. Speeds were very good. We did see the privacy audit needs some improvements. The good thing about Nord is they have third party audits to verify they don't collect logs. Um, the leadership has become much more transparent over the years and the company is originally owned. So that's also a good plus. They could improve some of the website. Things have less tracking on its customers, which would be ideal. Customer support, as we overviewed, is very good. I didn't really have any issues with them, and they've definitely improved that over the years as well. Um, finally, as I'd mentioned before, the streaming works excellent. And as you saw in the application section, the GUI in appearance is pretty much perfect. There's really not really much issues when coming to use NordVPN specific application. However, like I said earlier, I do wish these officer feeded service would actually work. That's my one complaint with the application, I think, is I can't get these to work. And I've seen other people's with the same issue. So Nord might not specifically be the best VPN if you're looking to use default op open VPN or bypass firewall restrictions. You might want to check out something like TorGuard. It's always been known for that or even Surfshark might be a little bit better since it seems to work a little bit better with its open VPN protocols. Um, but specifically Nord as a default 
With auto configuration and WireGuard, it works fine for pretty much 90% of users. So there shouldn't be any issues unless you're specifically having issues with connecting to uh, VPNs normally, whether you're in a sensor country or something like that. Anyways, guys, Nord is ranked number two right now on my tier list, 77.25.25 points over to Surfshark. And they're, since they're like the same product or same kind of company owns both of these, it's not really surprising to see them so closely related. It's definitely a, uh, a VPN that's climbed up higher in my rankings over the years due to just getting better and probably using their huge um, bank chest to improve their service. So if you guys are interested, click the link in the description down below to support the channel and get the deal mentioned in this video. And I'll see you in the next VPN review very soon.